Okay, so this is the one that everybody asked me to do, the 90 millimeter Fuji Macro versus the 80. I just got done doing a bunch of testing. With that, I have some test samples um, below for you to look at. Um, first off, I wanted to mention uh, something specific that a lot of people had asked me regarding the Tequina 100 millimeter macro, which is a wonderful lens that I've recommended endlessly, and it's still a perfectly fine lens. I mean, it is a $400 lens, um, but it is an icon mount, but everybody kept asking me about that, and uh, I think it's some hardcore macro people that wanted to have a single lens for macro slash portraiture. And also a few people that are using that lens adapted or considering it for Fuji. And the 80 millimeter is sharper. It is infinitely faster. However, most macro photography requires manual focus override because you're talking about such close parameters of uh, shooting. But overall, the 80 millimeter is a superior lens. Uh, now the Tikina does have better micro contrast for black and white photography, but in macro photography, um, while sharpness is not everything in macro photography, resolution or sharpness is a lot. This is a specific narrow parameter where it is important, and uh, the 80 millimeter is basically superior in every way to the Tikina, just uh, flat out. And doing a testing between two identical uh, XT2s I showed you in a prior video, uh, testing a near and a far focus with all settings absolutely identical, and I tested this over 30 times, literally to make sure um, the 90 millimeter averaged between near and far focus when it actually moved quickly to near, far, or far to near, averaged at two seconds or a hair over two seconds, and with the 80 millimeter averaged at a second or a hair over a second. So the 80 millimeter is substantially faster. Um, also the test samples below if you take a look, and I also created a, a Flickr page for the 80 millimeter Fujifilm Macro. Well, it is about uh, Eh, about 15 or 20 percent longer than the 90 millimeter. Um, it is a sharper lens than the 90 millimeter. Not by much. The 90 millimeter is already plenty sharp. And the 90 millimeter was Fujifilm's fastest autofocus lens, but uh, that has now been taken by the 80. Um, the 80 millimeter does have a swirly cat's eye bokeh at f2.8. So I was actually using a, a mannequin or a hairdresser's head actually, and showing you the bokeh differences at f2.8 on both lenses versus the 80 millimeter. Um, it is more ethereal. Of course, the 80 can't open up to f2 like the 90 can. At f2, the 90 millimeter is more ethereal and has a more washed-out background um, uh, in the uh, out-of-focus elements on the 90 versus the 80. But it depends on what you want. Um, there is two types of uh, cat's eye swirly bokeh. There is the good kind that the 80 has. Then there is the bad kind that's really harsh and obnoxious, like you find in. Uh, many uh, Russian lenses, especially the older remakes that have waterhouse apertures. Um, but we're talking about $900 versus $1,200. $900 for the 90 millimeter and $1,200 for the 80. Now the 80 does have optical image stabilization. The 90 certainly does not. You actually have a really nice switch on the 80 for three different focusing distances, so it's actually not hunting and hunting for autofocus when it's outside of the range of what you're actually pointing it at. And actually dropping it over to closest focusing at 0.25 to 0.5 meters is really great and wonderful when focusing up close as it's not trying to hunt through its entire range. Um, between the two, if you only have two lenses, so given the fact that this is a dual purpose lens, you can use easily for portraiture and other things, as well as obviously so macro. I mean, I would consider the Fujifilm for another $300 the 80 for another $300 to be well worth it. So comparing the two, um, other than the slightly more ethereal uh, pastel out-of-focus elements at f2, which is not that substantial over 2.8, and I have the test shots in the links below, um, the 80 millimeter is superior in every way to the 90 if you just went head-to-head uh, -head on both. The only issue that the 80 has, and I can't call it an issue, is when you actually go to preview your images um, uh, the uh, the uh, linear motors, the power to them is dropped and the lens makes a, a discernible thunk. And of course the 90 does too, but it's substantially more so, like a, a bit over two times as noisy as the uh, 90 is when actually you go to preview an image and then go back. So when you actually go out, it's thunk. And when you go to half pressure shutter release button to go back to shooting, it's thunk when the uh, uh, the linear motors re-engage with power because they're powered down and powered up every time you actually go to preview an image. And there's no way around that in the settings. Um, but that's not really an issue. Um, it's just something to make note of. But uh, 
Across the board, I mean, the 80 is definitely sharper. The 80 is undeniably faster. Not only faster, it, it averages basically twice as fast between near and far uh, focus with all settings being absolutely identical between two X-T2s. Um, the 80 is the better value and it has OIS and uh, for $300 more uh, if someone's wanting to know between these two which to get uh, I will subjectively say definitely so the 80mm 2.8 macro here. Thank you so much for watching. If you like these videos you click the link below. just want you to be happy and get something that fits both your budget and the parameter of what you plan to use or shoot because not every photographer is the same. What you want to do with your stuff is not the same as what someone else wants to do as far as what they want to shoot and what they want it to look like. So try to be as helpful as possible. Thank you so much for watching and catch you later. Bye.